we are a team of surgeons who run a group surgical practice whose focus is on liver transplantation and operations on the liver, pancreas, gallbladder and bile duct, gastrointestinal surgery in general and hepatopancreatic biliary surgery and cancers in particular. We get a significant number of referrals for pancreatic cancer. The pancreas is an organ located on the back side within our tummy. In fact, there's a saying that God placed the pancreas in the back to prevent surgeons from messing around with the pancreas. This saying was appropriate earlier in the earlier days because there were significant complications of surgery on the pancreas. The important message here is that pancreatic surgery should not be taken lightly. When a patient comes to us, typically with symptoms like loss of appetite, jaundice, yellowing of the eyes, dark colored urine, some loss of weight, and some of the patients have a discomfort in the upper right side of the tummy or the abdomen. This kind of symptoms in a relatively elderly patient makes us suspect that there is a possibility of some kind of tumor in the hepatopancreatobiliary area. And when we investigate, do certain investigations, we are able to arrive at a diagnosis. Now, with time, more and more patients are being diagnosed with pancreatic tumors. Not all of them have pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic tumors, pancreatic cysts, are different kinds of diseases. Pancreatic cysts have very good results. Some tumors of the pancreas like neuroendocrine tumors, the results are much better than the more sinister or ominous disease that is pancreatic adenocarcinoma. The pancreas has a head, a body and a tail. So here you see the liver, the gallbladder, and from the gallbladder, there's a bile duct, which brings bile here. Inside the pancreas, there is a pancreatic duct. The pancreatic, I'm sorry, the pancreatic duct and the bile duct meet and together drain into this little opening here inside the duodenum, which is a part of the small intestine. So this part of the duodenum, where the pancreatic duct the bile duct meet and the duodenum is closely uh, sort of hugging the head of the pancreas. So this is a very uh, vital and crucial part where many important structures meet. Tumors in this region like the one here can be quite problematic because it involves treatment of not just one organ but this entire area. When a patient walks into my clinic with symptoms suggestive of pancreatic tumors, the typical investigations we first look at are the blood tests, very important being the liver function test. Now here you see the uh, interesting bit that we are talking about the pancreas, but one of the most important investigations would be the liver function test because the bile which comes from the liver drains through the pancreas. So we look at blood tests like the liver function test. We look at what is the level of hemoglobin and other important parameters and we look at some pancreatic uh, tumor markers which may give us some idea about the possibility of pancreatic tumors like adenocarcinoma. When we have the suspicion we then advise a very good quality high-end imaging in the form of either a CT scan or a PET scan. Now we look at the CT scan or the PET scan and then we are able to diagnose with a high degree of certainty that yes, the patient may be having a tumor like this one. This would be among a bigger sized tumor of the head of the pancreas because even very small tumors in the head of the pancreas which are like one centimeter small 
they can cause significant problems, significant risk, including risk of spread to other organs. When we suspect pancreatic tumors, we are not so much bothered about the biopsy. Contrary to popular belief, a biopsy is not always necessary in treating or diagnosing patients with cancers, particular cancers like this one. But very important is the image on the CT scan or the PET scan. And if there is a tumor in this region, which is causing jaundice, which is causing loss of appetite, which may be causing blockage of the bile duct, pancreatic duct, or may sometimes even be causing blockage to the passage of food, we suspect a pancreatic cancer, diagnose it on the basis of CT and PET scan, and then we have to do the very important thing of discussing and educating the patient and the family about the disease and then we ensure that if the patient has a relatively early stage disease then the treatment would be in one form and if it's a relatively advanced stage disease then the treatment would be quite different once we have diagnosed pancreatic cancer uh, before starting any treatment we need to stage the disease now what is staging staging is basically uh, how far the tumor has spread from its position to any other body site that is the basic uh, you can say the principle of staging now this is done actually during the time of diagnosis only by uh, either CT scan or PET CT whatever has been done that is actually used for staging the disease now if the tumor is localized only in the pancreas that is a relatively early stage now when the disease or the cancer spreads to the lymph node or the surrounding glands uh, then it is uh, a little advanced disease and if it is going to other places of the body like liver lungs bones or any other places then it is quite advanced disease and usually surgery has no role in that type of advanced disease but in the first group and in the second group where the tumor is relatively in the early stage the treatment of choice is surgery uh, in cases where it invades the vein uh, it can be take uh, the vein can be resected with the tumor when we do the surgery and uh, this gives a equal result pa with patients who does not have invasion of the vein the vein we are talking about is the portal vein or the superior mesenteric vein and in as we also do liver transplants and we have quite an experience in dealing with vessels and uh, repairing and attaching them to one another we can say that this can be done with equivalent safety and success rate of patients who are not having the invasion to the portal vein or superior mesenteric vein uh, in general if it is invading the artery the superior mesenteric artery it is not in the operation stage then we offer something else some other form of treatment pancreatic cancer mostly occurs in the head of the pancreas now the surgery we do to treat the pancreatic cancer of the head is called whipple's operation now what is that uh, in whipple's operation what we do is we take out head of the pancreas this is the head of the pancreas with part of the stomach or sometimes we don't take the stomach we only take the duodenum but duodenum is always taken and then bile duct and gallbladder these are the things we take out when we do whipple's operation and as i said before sometimes we have to take part of the veins superior mesenteric vein or portal vein now once we have taken these things out we have to reconnect the ducts or you can say the stomach or bile duct or pancreas we have to reconnect them to the uh, intestine so that the normal physiology is maintained and what we do is we do a anastomosis or joining of pancreas to the small intestine a joining of a bile duct to the small intestine a joining of the stomach to the small intestine sometimes we also add a feeding tube called feeding jejunostomy to uh, give nutrition in the post operative period when alan oldfather whipple did the first time this surgery uh, he was doing it in two stages in one stage on the first stage he will take out the tumor and the surrounding organs and then in the later stage uh, he will join it back 
So this was so complex to begin with, but with improving technology in all the fields of surgery, like using magnification, using loops, using fine sutures, uh, gentle handling of the tissues and all these things with also perioperative care, like the improvement in anesthesia services and the intensive care services, the results are now pretty good like we can deliver a success rate of in, in the tune of 95 percent in cases of where we are doing whipple's operation and this is probably the most complex operation other than liver transplantation involving uh, long duration and involving uh, expertise of many fields it is very disheartening for anybody to have pancreatic cancer but the picture is not always gloomy we do have patient who had pancreatic cancer, had operations and doing well for a very long period of time. Having said that, there are complications related to this operation. Normally because we are dealing with patients who are elderly, they have got comorbidities in the form of diabetes, heart problem and the mainstay of treatment for pancreatic cancer is surgery. Since this is not a minor surgery, this is a major undertaking. There are few complications which we need to understand which you can have after the operation. If you look at overall complication rate of Whipple's operation, it ranges somewhere in the terms of 20 to 30 percent people will have some sort of complication. But the good thing is that not all of them will have a major complication. The major complication range from around 5 to 10 percent. One of the most important part of the operation is joining the pancreatic duct with the intestine and it takes a lot of endurance and a lot of time to do that. The reason is this leak leads to most of the complication. The leak rate of pancreatic anastomosis may be up to 20% but this leak causing significant problem to the patient will be in the tune of 5 to 8%. If there is a leak then the chances is that that the stay in the hospital is going to increase and there are some morbidity associated with this complication in the terms of that you may require a pipe to be inserted even after the operation you may require to do a ct scan after the operation probably due to the pancreatic leak there is sometimes the stomach take more time to function the bypass which has been formed during the operation it takes more time and during that time, that is the reason we do routine uh, put a tube into the intestine so that we can do the feeding by the time you recover. This is a major undertaking. This operation is a major undertaking. We need to be aware of the complications which can happen. But most of the time, we are able to manage the complications. And up to 90 to 95% of the patient will go back home and resume a normal life. Though if there is a complication, the stay may be prolonged. Once you are discharged from the hospital, the next thing we need to see and look at it is the biopsy report, which is which will guide us whether you require further chemotherapy or not. Depending on the biopsy report, you may require chemotherapy and in case it is indicated, you should undergo the full chemotherapy regime to complete the full treatment of the pancreatic cancer and we had many patients who have had surgery chemotherapy and we have been following them up for the last five seven or eight years and they're doing well so it is important to complete the whole treatment not just a surgery while we may wish and hope otherwise unfortunately at some point in our lives we have to face disease sometimes very serious ones either which we have ourselves or which affects someone who is close to us. When faced with a disease as terrifying as pancreatic cancer, especially adenocarcinoma, it is scary indeed. If I were to know today that I have been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, I would be either scared, terrified, or perhaps go into severe depression or 
in a state of complete panic and despair. Very often, family members request us not to disclose the diagnosis of cancer to the patient. We strongly believe that this should not be the practice. We have seen time and again that when family members try to hide the diagnosis from the patient, the patient very often is asked to sit outside after the initial consultation and the family members want to have a discussion with us. But the patient feels that not only he must be having cancer, but probably it is the fourth or last stage and there is no hope of cure. It is very important to tell the patient that yes, unfortunately you have a tumor, unfortunately it is cancer and then discuss the treatment options with him. Especially if it is an early stage cancer, we will be able to deliver good results. These things need to be discussed with him. He must be given time to understand the disease, to come to terms with the fact that he has cancer and then also to realize that there is hope. It is not the end of the world and we can offer treatment options which may have gratifying results. Once we have the patient himself or herself on board in this treatment plan, once we have him motivated, once we discuss amongst our own team members, we the surgeons, the medical oncologists, the radiation oncologists, and then we form a treatment plan. And after surgery, we find that a motivated patient fares much better than someone who is not as motivated for the treatment plan. This motivation helps us because the patient tries, puts his in his bit in terms of breathing exercises after the operation, in terms of moving around, in terms of having a little more protein, the nutrition that is required, uh, that intake, that physical effort is much higher and results are better. We strongly urge the family, family members to involve the patient in this. And it is important because he is the person, he is the person who has the disease and as an adult, he has the right to know his disease fully and he can then give in his very best.